Hello there. In this video, I'm going to showcase my Fortress of Gulf Cobalt right before I put it into a retirement. It is the centerpiece of my gameplay series called The Savage Lands. I put a playlist down there in the description box if you want to see the entire story of this place, why it's sitting here, what the matter is with its home civilization, all these things. In this video, I just want to introduce what I what I did here before I put it into retirement and go on to the next fortress on this continent. So this place here is sitting in the middle of a plains. And when I was uh, building this fortress, I didn't know that I set foot on a area that has no iron and no meaningful metal deposits, and that has formed a lot about the building style of this place. So we have a road, or we had a road here, but has been shattered by a dragon, and when we enter the castle or fortress, as you see here, it's uh, kind of a cubicle, and uh, we have here, or entrance for the traders, so Trade caravan carts can go down here, and we have trading areas there. And the main entrance for everybody is sitting here. And as you can see here, these guys, they are quite xenophobic and not really open for guests. And with a flick of this lever, we can raise all the bridges that, are, that we can see on the screen, forcing the enemy to take this uh, zigzag route where we have, when we look downstairs here, a really threatening assortment of stonefall traps. Like I said, this place has almost no metal, so the denizens of Gulf Cobalt had to resort on non-metallic solutions. That's cages and stonefall traps for you. When there's no enemy in the vicinity, we're doing our business over this staircase, which leads here past the barracks. So if there's ever anybody sneaking here, quickly in there. There's an armed force greeting them, clad in pilfered gear and over years painstakingly collected scraps of metal. And this ragtag bunch of, uh, of, of armed soldiers is the best that Gulf Cobalt can muster. So they might be armed with not much, but they are already really, really long in training. And they are, well, they, they've put up a fight or two, but all in all, this is uh, the weakest point of defense of Gulf Cobalt. If we go downstairs here, we have here still our farmer's workshops, because we have a underground pasture, a, a abandoned attempt of building an underground tree farm, and a couple of uh, rock fall traps secure the perimeter here. This area here was once the staging point of the early farming. When we go deeper downstairs, we're breaching a light aquifer that's uh, providing fresh water for a fortress. As we see here, we have a bit of a water system that's providing irrigation downstairs. That's where we enter the actual fortress, which is again secured by another perimeter of rock fall traps that will bring the enemy into trouble. If they have braved already the spiral, there's even more death there. And the people of Gulf Cobalt plan to expand this. So here we enter the actual fortress and the actual bustling center of uh, civilization. Here we have the kitchens and the distilleries, as you see. This place here is meant to work in high, um, in, in high volumes, we have here irrigated farms that are not completely uh, put up into business as of yet. We are running on a low stockpile of food and drink, but uh, that's right now only a question of time until this production kicks into full motion. We have a bit of uh, textile industry, only fledgling, but since this is running since the very beginning, we have all the clothing we require. And here it already begins to stand out. There's a lot of uh, gravestones and slabs here. That's because this place here is worshipping a death and suicide god primarily. And on the other hand, a love god. So they, they really have it with the extreme opposites here. We're entering now the, uh, the workshop area, which is a really well which depicts really well the history of this place. We still have everything all over the place. There is no bigger metal industry because this, basically the dwarves left everything here as we started out, as we discovered that there was no 
bigger stash of metal to be found. The Cassiterite that we see here is basically all the mineral wealth, besides a few scraps of gold nuggets that we found. That's that. There was no coal, there was no, there was no iron, there was no copper, there was no nothing. We are stuck here with a bit of tin and charcoal to melt that, and that's that. So this area here is kind of a bit of an abandoned place where everything is just like, a, like it was in the founding times. We have a small wood processing industry over here, but what we really have here is a heavy duty stone processing industry because rock was the most abundant resource. Bit of uh, jewel engraving happens here, furniture industry, nothing too special. But here, here is the real bustling heart of the fortress. We have a city that has fine promenades, with wonderful decorations everywhere. The floors are bauxite, the apartments, well, they aren't fully garnered out yet. We have a library here depicting the history of the adventures that have happened here so far. This place has been sieged by a dragon, so we have a statue of that dragon here as well, right next to it, the statue of the killer of that dragon. We have several temples, dining halls, and even more temples. Gulf Cobalt is a very, very religious place after all. We have very, very, very wonderful gods like deformation, love, and uh, like I said, death and suicide. Wonderful people. But if you are interested in that, there's an entire playlist leading you to the rest of that. So this is uh, this is really the most uh, splendorful part. Down here, we have the part that will be, in my imagination, completed over the course of the next years floors will be laid out, a new dining hall is being constructed, guild halls are here with artifacts on display, new apartments. Altogether, this is where the city thrives. We see here the failed attempts of uh, getting some metal out of the mountain. We have here the uh, newly founded tombs, which is uh, really Pretty pragmatic, but uh, you know dwarves. And if we browse down here, check out the other side, there's the western and the eastern mines. And when we go downstairs, we see that there is a long, long history of failed mining here, which ultimately yielded the caverns, which was a brief shimmer of hope. We were here looking for different metals, but except for Castorite and a few scraps of gold, nothing showed up. We dived deeper and deeper and deeper and we went to see not the bottom of this cavern yet. We went deeper and ever deeper at minus 83 elevation. And if you go back on the surface with me, you see that's minus that that's 80 height levels that we went downstairs. We finally hit rock bottom of the cavern only to see that it's all flooded. It's an entire watery mess. So we went deeper deeper ever again, and uh, once we went deep enough, we breached the next layer of the caverns, and uh, here, luckily, we finally discovered a area that was not flooded like crazy, and here we started to carve our way down into the deeper layers of the caverns, but uh, Gulf Cobalt was ever ridden by a never-ending swarm of forgotten beasts that were just roaming this uh, segment here, and with no weapons at their disposal, there was no chance for the denizens of Gulf Cobalt to brave the, this darkness. So, they went again deeper and deeper, because, you know, dwarves are greedy, and ultimately we've hit a lava tube here and the third layer of the caverns and you can already see here this the messenger of the arrow is a divine being that we have accidentally freed while we were delving for adamantium you know after all the brave souls of gulf cobalt were like we can maybe maybe we will find the metal we were searching if we were just digging deep enough and they were digging deeper. And ultimately, I think if they were able, would have been able to breach what was here, there was some magma in, the, in there, which evaporated ultimately, but it uh, did cost the life of a miner. And then we've set free a divine being, which slaughtered several of ours. And uh, well, down here was the adamantine that we were looking for, but uh, yeah. 
When that happened, these mines were sealed off. And the Baron of this place also died. And that's when I figured this is the end of the story of Gulf Cobalt, where these people will settle down and where I will retire the fortress, and I don't know where it will go, if they will reopen the depths yet again to brave the darkness for more adamantine, or for the first adamantine, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that this fortress will grow with more traps and more paranoia. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, round trip. And like I said, there is an entire story with a playlist with tw about 20 episodes illustrating what has happened here so far and how this all came together and of course there will be more adventures and more fortresses i hope you enjoyed this feel free to leave me a comment about golf cobalt or whatever is on your mind feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video to make sure that other people find it as well and last but not least consider subscribing this helps tremendously and it would be my pleasure if you'd even turn on the bell thing so you get a, can get a notification whenever i put something new online whatever might be the case i hope you had a grand time and have a wonderful day and most importantly enjoy gaming and hopefully see you soon bye bye